Few of us would think of the mobile games industry as an ageing teenager. But playing games on mobile phones has been popular since 1998 thanks to Nokia. Their unrivaled and addictive snake sealed their place as the world's number one mobile maker. But it wasn't until the advent of Apple's iPhone in 2007 that mobile gaming really took off. Well, the mobile video games industry has changed dramatically over the last 10 years. Uh, it's changed partly in terms of uh, the technology, partly in terms of the, the platforms which uh, are now in use, and partly in terms of the prevalence of mobile gaming. So just to take one example, one very significant fact. In 2013 and 2014, a billion smartphones were shifted worldwide. And according to Richard Wilson, CEO of Video Games Trade Association, Tiger, it's now a bigger business than ever. With smartphones becoming ubiquitous, almost everyone has access to a device on which they can play mobile games. It's such a huge sector that this year's Mobile Gaming Forum in London saw 600 industry insiders in attendance. The conference is a chance for the great and the good of mobile to get together and discuss the state of the industry and the future. And they don't come much better placed than Gameville. As one of the biggest gaming companies in their native South career, Gameville have been at the forefront of the mobile industry since its inception. And as president of Gameville USA, Kiu Lee, explains, there's been remarkable progress in just over a decade. We started mobile gaming since the year 2000, which was almost the beginning of mobile gaming. It was early year snake type of games on the Nokia phones when we just began. And, uh, it's all black and white and on a very tiny screen. Now we're actually developing games for screens that have the same screen resolutions as uh, P uh, TVs do. Gameville are making particularly good use of this new graphical horsepower with their new titles, Darkness Reborn and Critica, The White Knights. Both are hack and slash role-playing titles with wildly different art styles. Darkness Reborn has gone for a grittier fantasy vibe, while Critica is more colourful and cartoonish. But neither would have been possible were it not for advanced technology inside the devices. Since last year, the biggest change that I've been noticing is the production value increasing. So as you've uh, seen through all the newer Apple phones or the Android devices, uh, they all have uh, very nice chipsets that, um, that can run advanced uh, mobile gaming. The popularity of mobile gaming has even led to the creation of giants in the industry. Giants like Finnish mega brand Rovio. Starting life back in 2004, it took five years and 52 games before they struck the big time with Angry Birds. That simple yet addictive game catapulted the small developer into the developer's stratosphere and made Angry Birds one of the most recognisable brands in the world. Their first game has been downloaded a reported one billion times, meaning almost everyone who has a smartphone has it. It's now grown to the point where just last year, four separate Angry Birds titles were released. But that's not all Rovio have planned for the franchise, as their head of external products, Wilhelm Thatt, explains. Rovio is, is, is really set out to build brands for hundreds of years. That's, that's our goal. Uh, we. Our statement is that we are uh, the world's largest entertainment company with games at its heart. Uh, and, and 2016 uh, marks a massive year for Rovio. We're bringing out the feature-length movie, cinema, Cinemas Worldwide, in the beginning of summer 2016 on the Angry Birds IP. Rovio has also been combining the marketing power of Angry Birds with other well-known brands to create mega franchises. Last year's Angry Birds Transformers was the perfect example. Corporate team-ups have proven to be a powerful tool in the current mobile gaming market, but Gameville's Caillou Lee sees the true potential in almost untapped places. We've been getting, getting a lot of data that Middle East uh, is actually one of the fastest growing territories around the world, um, besides Asia. And uh, so we, we, we want to focus more uh, efforts into those markets. I think there is a big fan base uh, in, in the Middle East and I, think, I definitely feel like that's a territory that we should be concentrating in the future.
While developers are looking to expand their titles into new markets, manufacturers are racing to produce more advanced devices. This constant push to pair the fastest microchips and processors with the latest smartphones and tablets offers developers the perfect playground. While traditional home consoles like the PS4 and Xbox One are expected to have a shelf life of over five years, phones and tablets are updated annually and sometimes more frequently than that. And consumers are more likely to invest money in a new handset rather than a new console. This fertile moment for the mobile games industry is being seized upon and Rovio's Wilhelm Thatt sees that trend continuing. We see production values and, and quality going up every year. Um, the, the, the level of, of games that, that you see coming out of the bigger studios, uh, I believe that's going to continue. You're going to see better and better games uh, in the future. Uh, and, um, and you're probably also going to see more experiments, experimental features uh, using, using some of the technology on, on mobile phones that are perhaps unexploited at this moment. Those advances are not lost on Apple's main software rivals, Google, a company that has invested heavily in the mobile space. And according to their global head of partnerships, Sergio Salvador, they too think the future is in new technology. I was joking before about the fact that if I had a crystal ball, I would probably put my bet on two things. One of them is virtual reality. So I'm pretty excited about efforts like Samsung Gear, obviously Oculus, our own Google Cardboard, right, which is a very affordable, accessible experience. Um, and I'm really looking forward to see what comes out of it. And the second trend will be possibly wearables. Right? I'm wearing myself a, a smartwatch here. Um, and you know you have a bit of an experience of gaming in there. I think there's significant room for improvement. And I'm also kind of looking forward to see what uh, you know the very smart developers that are in this room today can come up with in the next few years in terms of gaming experiences in wearables.